Hi everyone. Today let's look at the paper. Uh, let's verify step by step. So this paper uh, compares two different methods of training uh, reward models. And they are uh, mainly outcome supervision, wherein feedback is provided on the final result and process supervision, wherein each intermediate reasoning step is given some feedback. So um, the reward models they use here are all from the GPT-4 model. And um, since they are basically dealing with a math data set here, uh, they fine tune it on 1.5 billion math relevant tokens. So um, they have a generator which is going to generate the different uh, solutions to a particular problem. And this generator is going to generate solutions in a, a chain of thought manner. As in you have the uh, math problem, it is going to generate a bunch of reasoning steps and then eventually give the final answer. Uh, so in order to train the generator to provide steps um, the, in the desired format, they basically uh, do some few short prompting to generate these uh, steps, right? And their method is basically shown here. Uh, so you have a problem, a math problem, and you have the final answer. This is given in your data set. So the generator generates a bunch of different steps and the final answer. And now um, there is a difference between uh, outcome supervision and process supervision. So in outcome supervision, you get one score for this entire series of steps. Whereas in process supervision, each step is given a particular score. So you have human uh, labelers which are who are going to provide either a positive or a negative or a neutral feedback for each step. And based on that, you want your language model to predict a single token for each step, right? So this is with the process supervision. And eventually, if you want a single score for your entire uh, solution, you're basically going to multiply the correctness probabilities of each step and get one score. Whereas when you're looking at outcome supervision, you're basically looking at the entire um, example and the different steps, and you're only comparing the final answer to whatever is the right answer and whether it is right or wrong. So you have richer signals in your uh, process supervision. That is what they do. Um, and then um, when they're basically um, showing solutions to human labelers, they want to get uh, feedback only on convincing wrong solutions. As in, they are basically going to get this feedback while they are training their reward model. So every time they basically um, annotate, uh, get some annotations, they use those examples to retrain their reward model iteratively, right? And uh, they when and and how do they choose which examples they need to provide to human labelers? They're basically looking at um, examples where solutions are highly rated by the best um, reward model which they have so far, process reward model, but yet they reach the final wrong answer. So, so basically most of the steps here are right, but the final answer is wrong, right? So these are hard examples for the reward model because most of the, exam the, most of the reasoning steps are uh, accurate. And, um, and those are the examples which are annotated by human labelers, right? So this is how they do their large scale uh, supervision where they have a large scale reward model and uh, they have a generator which is going to uh, have step by step, uh, which is going to generate some uh, generations. So for each problem, you're going to have n different generations. And then uh, you're going to see which of these generations are hard for your reward model and then get human feedback on them. Um, human feedback on per step uh, basis, right? You're getting step level labels. And, um, and then they're basically using that to train your uh, reward model, right? And then uh, they're looking at uh, best of n performance. So they're looking at the n generations and they're looking at the uh, highest score which is given by the reward model out of these n generations 
and then they compare the final answer of that generation with the uh, ground truth and then they show this graph right so that is the best of n comparison so um, majority voting is a strong baseline here so uh, this basically is um, you have your generations from from another generator and then you're looking at the final answer from these generations and you're comparing that with the ground truth and you're looking at what the majority of these uh, answers refer to right um and for the uh, outcome uh, reward model as well as a process supervised reward model you're looking at the best uh, score given by the reward model and you're looking at the final answers how they compare to the ground truth and you can see that uh, when you have less number of uh, solutions from the generator you see that the gap between outcome and process supervision is not as much but then when you have uh, a lot of uh, like around 1000 examples which are generated and uh, you train your reward models on these, you see that the gap between process supervision and outcome supervision is considerable and process supervision outperforms uh, outcome supervision. Right. And uh, they repeat these experiments on a small scale with synthetic supervision as well. Right. So. The um, process supervised uh, reward model, which was used before, uh, they use that to supervise uh, another smaller uh, reward model, right? So they use the process supervised, uh, the PRM from earlier, which was trained on human feedback to act as a proxy for uh, annotations for the smaller, uh, smaller scale experiments, right? So they basically have, you can have three types of supervision now. Uh, one is a final answer checking outcome supervision because you have the ground truth and a generation is going to have a particular answer, right? So you, you directly have that. The second is you have outcome supervision from the PRM large, where we said that you're going to get like one score for um, based on the uh, correctness probabilities of each step. And you're also going to have process supervision from uh, PRM large. And um, so here they um, have PRM selector, right? A small scale reward model. And, uh, and now again, similar to what experiments were done before, you can only choose to annotate those examples from the uh, PRM, from the large scale PRM model, which are harder for your PRM selector. Um, and, and then uh, utilize those examples to retrain your PRM selector, right? So that's the active learning, uh, PRM with active learning. So generally they find the same trend in smaller models as well, where they find that as you increase the number of solutions from the generator uh, on which the reward model is trained, you see that um, process supervision basically does better compared to outcome supervision. And also, uh, also um, when you just get the outcome supervision from the large model and also just looking at the final answer and giving some supervision. And in fact, active learning is better compared to uh, just getting PRM large supervision or final answer supervision a and final answer supervision, sorry. So um, <clears throat> then they look at the out of uh, distribution generalization where they look at their reward models and they see if they're able to identify correct generations from other data sets such as calculus, chemistry, physics. And uh, they see that the reward models which are trained with process supervision are uh, better able to identify correct generations compared to uh, either outcome supervision or majority vote. So uh, basically what they say is um, doing this kind of a process supervision gives you a richer signal in identifying the steps which were correct and also the precise location where the chain of thought reasoning was wrong rather than just giving a final outcome of whether it is right or wrong. And uh, usually um, whenever you do alignment, uh, you do see some alignment tags where you do see a decrease uh, capability of the model, although it is aligned now. Uh, but here you see that uh, with process supervision, you, you do not incur that uh, alignment tax as such. And uh, you see that it's, it's still being able to perform well on uh, on these math problems. Next, they acknowledge uh, test set contamination, saying that uh, some of the problems uh, 
might have appeared in the pre-training data set but then they say that it's uh, probably similar across all the methods both uh, outcome supervision and process supervision so the relative results should still hold so the main takeaway here is uh, you can use process supervision to train more reliable reward models and um, whenever you're using human data collection uh, instead of annotating all the examples uh, probably uh, finding the most valuable model completions and only asking humans to annotate those could save uh, some annotation cost and then they also release their uh, data set uh, which contains step-by-step -step, uh, human feedback uh, on the math data set.